It is now my exceptional pleasure to bring two of my heroes onto the stage. Um, jo Brand told me backstage that she beat Angelina Jolie to an award this year, or last year. <laughs> she, she, is, she is officially more charitable than Angelina. And, and her being here is just proof of that. Um, she is also, uh, you know, the funniest woman alive, possibly, except for Sandy, who is in my sight line. Um, <laughs> and, and not only that, um, I once really, actually, literally wet myself in public because of you, but I probably shouldn't talk about that. Um, and um, she, through, through the cake hole, wonderful, wonderful biographies, and also, of course, she's been doing the, the and what's it called, an extra slice um, bake-off program, which is fantastic, which sort of segues neatly to Rosie. With Rosie, I want to lie down and worship her. Um, as, a, as a journalist, you know, this is a woman who has stormed every male bastion it is possible to storm as the first editor of a broadsheet, the first, the first female editor of a broadsheet, first female editor of a daily. She also, of course, founded Spare Rib, which changed my life, and I suspect for many people in this room. Um, and of course, five times 15, which is why, why we're all here. So thank you very much for that. Um, but, but Rosie has also been on my favorite program ever, MasterChef. So, <laughs> you know. I loved her before. She is now a goddess to me beyond compare. Please, will you two come to the stage? <laughs> oh, yeah. Got some water. Do I want some water. Why not? We've also got an egg timer, which is quite a, a long way to the stage. It's bit, a long way. We're a very long way from You here. got a bit tired in between. You went, oh, fuck it. Eight. <laughs> Am I allowed to tell them about your walking? No. Oh, right, OK. She's doing a bit of walking lately. We've both, uh, we've both got Fitbits. Um, mine's run out of uh, gas, but Joe's walked... Um, and mine's at home in his pyjamas. Um, <laughs> she's walked six kilometres already today, <laughs> which I'm very envious of. I've done almost nothing. But, uh, but we're here to talk about, like, uh, women in the media and representations of the media. And, I suppose it's fair to say you and I have been around a while. I know. It doesn't look like that, but we have. <laughs> it doesn't look like that at all. Our combined age is 341. <laughs> 340 and one. God, I love you. <laughs> but would you, do you think it's fair to say it's got worse, meaner and nastier? Um, yes. I think it probably is fair to say it's got worse. I think... Um, you know, when I first started off in, in the 80s, you, you had a sprinkling of very unpleasant um, journalists. Much as I hate to bring his name up so early on, Gary Bushell was the shining light uh, for The Sun in those days, who was just so vile um, about, about women. Um, for example, and I won't say who this is because I just thought this was the most appalling uh, thing to say. He, there was a, an actress who was really popular on, uh, on, on telly at the time, and his comment about her in his column was she should be employed at Heathrow Airport sniffing parcels, which I think is the most so absolutely breathtaking, um, you know, just nastiness, misogyny, okay. everything. If, if I could just say, um, I got off lightly in comparison because he called me a hideous old boiler. And um, <laughs> I was rather proud of that, really. And, but I, I remember at the time thinking to myself, you know, not exactly an oil painting himself, is he, really? Unless there is an oil painting around called Constipated Warthog Licking Piss Off a Toilet Seat. <laughs> which, um, and I, I think the thing is, part of the problem at then, and it's kind of worse now, is that there aren't enough people to kind of come back at them, really. That they were allowed to sort of flourish uh, without being kind of beaten down, literally, sadly. Uh, and, and that has kind of grown. And there is some kind of unpleasant 
um, veins sort of running through the media, which seems to laud people the more nasty and cruel mm. uh, they are. But also, don't you think, I mean, I, I was very struck when Caroline Criado Perez did the campaign for a woman on banknote, and, and the tweets that she got about, that were beyond vile, of rape and fantasies about cutting her up and more or less cannibalising her and stuffing her in the fridge. I mean, all this woman had done was suggest that a woman should be on a banknote. And it made me think back, like, you know, Sverib was 43 years ago now. And the worst we got was Private Eye saying, here are two silly little girls, and they ran a picture of um, two sort of old actresses, and they said we were bits and tits and bums and mums or something like that. And that was about as nasty as it got. It's very weird thinking back that actually people were... Um, they either said they're downright stupid and we should ignore it, or they were kind of for it, but they didn't, they didn't start this kind of abuse. And you think, if you started to do that now, we'd be crucified. Yeah, but I, th I think you have to look at, at the differences, and there are subtle differences. You know, um, <coughs> Twitter has given far more people a public voice. Well, Not only is it public, it's anonymous. It's so actually, powers. there are people who can be brave yeah. Uh, you know, under the cloak of anonymity. And of course, the hilarious thing in many ways was actually, it wasn't just men doing that. There were women in there sending, you know, I'm going to rape you type tweets. It was just, it was just so bizarre. And I think to me, I, I, I have got a Twitter account, but mainly because um, I, I just want people to know there, there is a real me. All the people pretending to me, me saying <laughs> I had Rivita for my tea are lying. <laughs> and um, Top story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and secretly I weigh seven stone. I use a lot of cushions. Um, <laughs> you know, there, there was someone slightly creepy pretending to be me talking about um, like, like what I do with the kids at the weekend and where I take them and it was all really unpleasant so you get a blue tick so people will kind of know it's you so <laughs> I can't be bothered to say anything you know uh, why tell people what you've had for breakfast just bloody have breakfast in my book <laughs> um, so I think the thing is with Twitter that actually how many million people are there in this country 65 70 million you know that as a proportion of that number of people there are going to be quite a few that a are not very <laughs> nice and B, are going to express their not very niceness. Um, and women have always been much more of a target, haven't they, um, for that sort of abuse. Um, and so in some ways, I think Twitter has introduced a rather odd um, uh, kind of, um, an odd kind of attitude into the media, because actually, um, although you've got your Katie Hopkins and you've got your Rod Little and you've, and you've got that lot, um, they are at least saying these vile things. Uh, and, and they're named. it's them, and they're named, exactly. You know, sometimes I think it's because men have got, I mean, if I go, go back to Spare Rib, they didn't know what was happening, and they didn't take it seriously, and now they have to take it seriously. And they're scared, and they're angry, and they're nasty. I mean, you and I, before we came on, were swapping stories of bullying. Um, will you tell that story of what happened to you giving out a charity award? Uh, well, yeah, well, actually, it was, it was like a media award. Media and uh, I do quite a lot of, um, of corporate events because they're always, um, you know, blokes in suits. So it's brilliant for me. It's like a captive audience. I can bully in a feminist way. I love it. And um, I was at a media awards, and this one particular company kept winning uh, everything. And I was gently taking the piss out of them. I really wasn't being nasty about them at all. And they won the overall award for the evening. And the managing director came up to get the award. And as I was shaking his hand and handing him the award, he whispered in my ear, I always knew you weren't funny, but I never realised what a cunt you were. And yeah, I know. Uh, and, and then just walked off. And obviously this was intended to silence me and to humiliate me and make me think that the whole evening had been a disaster. And I, I just thought to myself, I am not going to let this happen. So we were actually at the end of the evening by then. So I just said to the audience, um, thank you all very much for coming. You've all been great, apart from, and I named the guy. Um, yeah. Isn't that cool?
And, and I said to them, the reason I've singled him out is because he's just said this to me. And I repeated what he'd said. Um, I feel that's really important to do that. And what was very interesting, actually, was the, the reaction was exactly the reaction you had. They all gasped. They yeah. couldn't believe it. But also afterwards, about 15, 20 of his staff um, came up to me and went, he's a cunt as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, but but I, th I think that's one way that women yeah, yeah, are, absolutely are can silenced, get, you know. Yes. I mean, people try and silence me by shouting out, you're fat, like I hadn't realised, which is <laughs> hilarious, you know. Um, as if I should just kind of be so ashamed, I, I'd go home at that, at that point, you know. Um, but it, it, you must, the thing is, you mustn't be silenced. So I kind of know I've got, I've got a, a, a reputation for being bolshy and for being... You know, um, I, I'm not actually an unpleasant person. I used to be a nurse, for Christ's sake, and I wasn't Sister Ratchet. I really wasn't. I was, <laughs> I was the opposite of that, you know. But as soon as a woman, as if you start to argue or you raise your voice or you say something negative about men, you, you acquire a particular mm. sort of personality. And there's lots of words for it. There's a harridan bitch, all kind of male speak, Absolutely. you know. Um, and, and you just have to fight against that. And I've actually found that when I've done these corporate events where um, there's mainly men there, um, that they don't hate me. Yeah. They're a bit wary at first because they think I'm going to pick on them. But they have a laugh because I tell jokes and that's what I want them to do. And, and the weird thing is that actually what's going on on the ground is really not what is, is being presented to us in, in the media. Things are changing. Um, you know, when I first uh, took my, five, my daughter to school when she was five, uh, there was one guy in, in the playground who was the main carer. And when she left primary school, I'd say about a third of people coming to pick up their children were men. So the landscape is changing, but there are people kind of at the top of the mail and at the top of the express that don't want to admit it and are fighting against okay. it. Okay, but let's, let's move on to then something when we were talking with Catherine and Sandy and, and Sophie before. I mean, they were interviewed and have been interviewed lots as the Women's Equality Party, and they still get what colour Catherine, what Catherine's haircut is like, her nail polish, uh, Sandy was described as the mum of the group because she had brought something to eat. Um, all these, uh, I mean, which, for which I'm sure everyone's very grateful, but I mean, just because, you know, they say Sandy's playing mum. Um, that was The Guardian. I mean, <laughs> okay, name names here, but how do we... Who was it in The Guardian? Oh, I don't know. Who was it? I, I haven't got that far, but I'm sure we can find out with a bit of sleuthing. Um, but the point is... That it, it, Not it, Owen you, Jones, surely. No, I'm, I'm no, kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, carry on, sorry. But, you know, how, that's what we've got to change as well. We've got to change, again, what girls grow up and reading, you know, is it in fact the most important thing, what your dress is like, what your shoes are like? We all compared the fact that we're now wearing shoes in which we can run, but... <laughs> We which we can walk. Which we can walk. Really? Yeah. yeah. What do we do? The, well, it, the pace of change is very, very slow. That's all I think. Yeah, the pace of change is slow. But, but you know, I, 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 to me, the, the best things happen sort of in kind of on the ground, in, in, in communities where people are prepared to, um, to do small things. And then those small things kind of make up a jigsaw, you know. I mean, to me, the two most important things are um, to try and get rid of all the kind of cliches there are about feminism, for example, because, um, you know, I talk to quite a lot of, of young women who would rather be called, you know, a size 20 than they would a feminist. Um, it's madness, really. Um, so maybe feminism just needs rebranding to fool them into the fact that actually, you know, it's not that ridiculous stereotype created by the papers. And the other thing I think is really important is to get that big grey mass of men that are kind of quite pleasant and, you know, um, and not misogynist and don't 
shout, show us your tits out of white vans. Um, have you had that? <laughs> even, even I've had that. <laughs> I, and I have to say, they picked the wrong day because I had really bad PMT and they were in a traffic jam and I just went up and ripped their windscreen wipers off. So, <laughs> you know, that's it. I recommend that. Go, go. We just need hundreds of toes, don't we? <laughs> I, I think it's doing lots of small things, you know, and, and also kind of having, I don't know, having unexpected figureheads, i.e. I would yeah. attack myself, actually, because everyone just thinks I'm a leery old man-hating radical feminist. Um, and I, 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 you know, I'm married, actually, I fucking hate my husband, but... Um, <laughs> it happens to everybody. That doesn't work, that doesn't work, but... Um, I would kind of bring some people into the fold that are sort of unexpected, really. Yeah, yeah. You no. Know. But it is that thing. We want 100 steps. We want, we want one step by 100 people now, rather than more shooting to the top by a few. And we need more people like you. Well, I, do, I mean, I do think that humour is... Yeah. is a, you, to bring that in, you know, and, and particularly this ridiculous thing that's gone on for far too long, that women aren't funny. Um, the reason for a long time that men, I think, said that women weren't funny was that women weren't funny um, in front of blokes because they were slagging them off and they didn't <laughs> want to hear. <laughs> and that, that's changed a bit now. But, um, you know, I, I think it's so important, really, to be laid back and to be funny about everything, really. Because people listen to you a bit more then. We've, good. We've run Sandy. out of time. One more joke. We've run out of time. One more joke. Well, I, I tell you, actually, one, I, I, did do, um, I did do a corporate event a couple of years ago in um, Southampton, which was all builders, and you can imagine what... <laughs> it was like 700 builders, and I walked on, I'm not joking, there was like an audible sigh of despair. <laughs> and they saw it, it, was, it, was, it was so sad, in a way. And you could hear murmurs of, you know, fucking, you know. And, um, so I, I said to them, well, you know, to, don't judge by appearances, because actually I know a lot more about building than you would imagine, because in fact my dad is a structural engineer who's written a fascinating book on scaffolding. Um, <laughs> my brother is uh, a quantity surveyor, and my husband's a fucking plank. So um, <laughs> I know a lot about it, you know. And, that's actually all you need to do, really. <laughs> you just need to make them laugh. And, and, and you know, pe people kind of think I get shouted at and threatened with murder by men all the time. But actually, when I'm out and about, it's not like that at all. It's kind of the opposite. They just think I'm a laugh and they say hello. And, you know, it, it's madness, really. It's Rod Little's fault. Well, on, on that cheery note, Rod Little, Joe, thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Rosie. I'm not a